The USB-C bandwidth of the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max mean that you can connect a lot of peripherals at the same time, and that means a ton of opportunities for content creators. External recording, external monitoring, external audio, you have so many options now. In this video, we're gonna walk through the YouTube video rig that I've put together for my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and we're also gonna talk through the options you have for both video and audio. Before we dive in, I wanna mention, I'm gonna talk about a lot of different gear in this video, all of the things I use to build my YouTube video rig, as well as different options that you have. This video is not sponsored by anyone and the, all of the gear that I'm gonna talk about that I have, I've bought myself. I do have Amazon affiliate links to the gear that I'm gonna talk about in the description though. So if anything sounds like it's a good fit for your setup and you wanna support this channel, those links are down there. All right, now several channels have already made videos about all of the different things you can connect to your iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max because of that new USB-C capability. And I actually did a very short video recently just showing what I've been testing and how I've been able to use a USB-C hub to connect multiple different things to my iPhone 15 Pro Max for a recording setup just like this. But in this video, I wanna take that a step further and walk through the rig that I've now completely constructed and also talk through video and audio recording options that you have because you have a lot of options. All right, we're gonna start by breaking down the rig that I put together, all of the different parts to it. And I'll also talk about some things I've noticed along the way as I was piecing it together. All right, starting with the cage that's around the iPhone. This is a cage from SmallRig and it is a universal smartphone cage. It's just got one little screw that you tighten down when you put the, uh, the phone in it. It's got all of these cold shoes and quarter 20 mounting points all the way around it. You can also get this same cage with uh, two handles that attach to the side. So if you're gonna be doing handheld footage with it at all, you can actually get that kit with the handles. Now the tripod itself that it's sitting on is a tabletop tripod from Neewer. It is adjustable and it's all metal, so I really like the quality of it. It comes with this nice ball head attachment on it. I have an Ulanzi Claw um, quick release attached to that because that's the quick release system that I use. The ball head that's on it is nice quality. I would recommend this for a tabletop tripod. It is very sturdy. Now the heart of the system here is the USB-C hub. This is one that I got off of Amazon. The link, of course, is in the description. It's not like a big name brand hub or anything, but I picked this one specifically because, well, it was not insanely expensive, but also because it supports the speeds. It matches the maximum speed of the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max USB port. It also happened to have all the ports I needed. It's got a USB-C port that is 10 gigabit. It's got USB-A ports. It's got card reader ports. It's also got an HDMI out on the end as well. And it's got a power delivery port. So it just happened to check all the boxes. For me, there's a ton on the market though that you can check out. Now it's being held in place by two separate components here. What's holding it directly is actually a smartphone mount from Ulanzi. It just so happens that it opens wide enough to perfectly clamp on to both ends of the hub and still allow enough space for the, the HDMI connection on the end here. And then it's being held in place by a little magic arm, a friction arm. And so it's just two quarter 20 mounts. So one is attached to the, uh, the mount here and the other one's attached to the side of the cage. And then there's just one screw that you loosen or tighten as you position it wherever you want. Up top, I have my field monitor. This is a seven inch field monitor from Feel World on Amazon. My opinion for something like this, this doesn't have to be like best of the best quality. It just has to be good enough that it works consistently and you can see the framing of your shot. It does require external power. You can use a battery pack or an AC adapter. Kind of essential to the rig because when you're using the rear facing camera, you can't see the screen. And that's just attached with a little ball head mount. There are lots of different monitor mounts that you can use. Now on this side, I have a power bank clamp. So this is also from Small Rig. It's good enough to hold medium size uh, power banks. It's not quite big enough to hold the power bank that I'm using right now. I'll talk more about your power bank and powering options later in the video, but there's nothing in it right now because the power bank I'm using is just a little bit too big. And then the last attachment down here on your bottom right of the cage is the SSD. So this is a little SSD mount from Small Rig that is attached to it, one of the cold shoes in the corner. I've got my SSD mounted in there, and that of course is connected to the hub. And that's it, because I have the quick release on here, you can actually detach this entire rig, and this could now go get set on top of any other tripod that I have in my recording space. So it's not 
permanently affixed to one. And when it's time to put this away and not have it sitting out on my desk, it's easier to take it apart as well. Only other thing connected to the hub that we haven't talked about is my audio interface. This is the SSL2, a desktop audio interface that works with any XLR microphone. And so I've got that connected to the hub, which is sending the audio signal into the iPhone as well. We'll talk more about those audio options in just a minute though. So that's the rig that I've put together. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about it or if you found any ways to, to connect or use some of these peripherals in what you think is a better way or a different way. Let me know that in the comments. Now there's one extra thing I wanna mention that I've done that has made this way easier and that is controlling my phone remotely using just any Bluetooth mouse. Because one of the biggest issues that you'll run into as a solo content creator using your iPhone to film is that you wanna use the rear facing cameras and that means you can't see the screen. Attaching an external monitor takes care of the not being able to see the screen so you can frame up your shot, make sure that everything looks the way it should. However, you still have to reach to the back of your phone to control the app to start and stop recording or to change a setting if you notice something doesn't look right. Well, all of that is fixed if you use a Bluetooth mouse to control the app. All you have to do is pair up any Bluetooth mouse with your iPhone, then go into your accessibility settings and enable the ability to remote control devices and specify that you want it to be the Bluetooth mouse. And then there you go. Now you can actually move around within the app using your mouse and you can start and stop recording. You can change settings. If there's something you notice, you know that you forgot to switch the audio input or something before you hit record, you can do all of that without having to get up and get to the back of your phone. All right, now let's start talking about the different video and audio recording options that you have, because man, just having this USB-C capability opens up so many doors. As you saw with my setup, I am using the external recording capability and I'm using the Blackmagic camera app for several reasons, but let's talk about two of the most important reasons. The first reason I like using the Blackmagic camera app is because you can record in any video codec and also save it to the external drive that you have. Whereas with the native Apple camera app, it's only gonna allow you to record externally if you're recording in ProRes. So if you just wanna record a regular compressed 4K video format or any video format that's not ProRes, then it's gonna record internally to the storage on your iPhone, which means you could run out of storage space if you don't have one of the really high capacity models. Speaking of storage devices, you don't only have to use SSDs. I personally prefer SSDs because because they give you, in my opinion, the best bang for the buck in terms of the most storage for the price. Whereas when you get into things like SD cards or thumb drives, these might be small and convenient, but usually you're gonna pay more per gigabyte of storage. And you also may not get the same high level of consistent speeds out of these devices that you will with an SSD. Now for this video, I'm using the Crucial X9 Pro SSD. I actually just released a video recently about the X9 Pro and the X10 Pro and why for a Mac user for recording with your iPhone, I actually recommend the X9 Pro, which is less expensive. So check that video out if you want the full breakdown of that. But you certainly can use faster SD cards Cards. And there are multiple ways to connect these to your iPhone. The USB-C hub that I am using right now actually has an SD card port. I wanna point out one quick thing about SD cards and flash drives in general here. You'll want to pay attention to the right speeds of these storage devices, especially if you're planning on recording 4K 60 frames per second, because it requires faster write speeds than recording at 24 or 30 FPS. I've had no trouble recording 4K60 on V90 SD cards, but I have had some dropped frames when using a V60 SD card. However, V60 should be fine for recording in 24 frames per second, and I've had no trouble doing just that. And if you have a rig where you can use a USB-C hub, then the door is wide open to all of these types of storage devices because you've got USB-A ports, USB-C ports, SD card readers on these hubs. And that just means you can use any of those options, which is awesome. Now, the other reason I like using the Blackmagic camera app rather than the native camera app is because of audio. And audio is another thing that now you have tons of options as far as how you get that into your iPhone in really high quality. But just specifically about the app difference, in the native iPhone camera app, there is no audio level control, even in video mode. So you can connect any audio source you want and it will work as an external audio source, meaning a USB audio interface like I'm using right now. You can use a USB microphone. You, pretty much anything that you can get into a USB connection you can use and it'll work with the native camera app, but there is no way to control the audio level in the native camera app. So that's a problem for using things like USB microphones that don't have built-in level controls. This is the Rode VideoMic Go 2. This just has a USB port. There's no way on this to control the audio level. 
You're supposed to control the level in the software that you're recording with. And the biggest issue with this that I found is that the audio level coming from specifically these microphones, the GoTo as well as the VideoMic NTG, over the USB connection, the audio seems to be really hot, like a really high gain level. So if you can't control it in the app, you run the risk of having clipping and distortion in your audio. However, the Blackmagic camera app takes care of all of that because you can control the audio level in the app when you have a USB audio device connected. You can do more fine tuning and get exactly the right level. And if you're using a USB device that has no control over the audio level, you can actually control it in the app. Now that's also true for some other third-party camera apps like Filmic Pro, but I have not seen yet an update to Filmic Pro where you can record externally. I'm sure at some point they'll probably release that functionality, but at the very least, the audio level control is also gonna still be there in most third-party camera apps like Filmic Pro or the Moment camera app. Now, just to talk about microphone choices a little bit more, the great thing about being able to connect an audio interface directly into your iPhone and get it baked into your video is that that opens the door not just to the device that you connect, but to the microphone that you're using. Because an audio interface opens the door to any XLR microphone that you might wanna use. This whole video so far, I've been using the Sennheiser MKH-50, which is sort of an industry standard indoor dialogue microphone that I use in all my YouTube videos, but it's an XLR microphone that requires 48 volts of phantom power. So if you were required to use a USB microphone, if that was the only thing you could use, then obviously you can't use the MKH-50 to record. But of course, that's not your only option. You can use any XLR microphone. So maybe you are doing like a video podcast and you wanna use your podcast microphone. You can connect microphones like this, the Electro Voice RE20 or the Shure SM7B, any XLR microphone that you have that you wanna use, anything you wanna to connect to your audio interface, now you can get that into your video in your iPhone. You can also use wireless microphones like the Rode Wireless Pro or Wireless Go 2 or the DigiMic system because those receivers have a USB output. So you can connect the USB output to your phone directly or to your uh, USB-C hub. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is power options because I did get a few questions on my other video about you know, how much power is required, what works without power sources and all of that. Unfortunately, I can't really give you a blanket answer for that. Of course, if the only thing you're connecting is an external drive to record video and you're not trying to connect anything else, you're gonna be fine as far as the power that's provided by the iPhone. It's definitely gonna drain the battery a little bit faster than if you weren't you know, connecting an external device, but it's when you get into this type of a setup where you've got multiple devices connected that rely on that USB bus power to work, that's where you're gonna to wanna to attach some type of power source. However, like I said, I can't really give you a blanket answer as to what works and what doesn't in this setup. Because for example, I tested a bunch of different audio interfaces. I'm using the SSL2 right now. I tested the Focusrite Scarlett Solo third gen. I tested the Focusrite Vocaster. I've tested a few other ones and I got different results on all of them. For example, the Scarlett Solo worked just fine attached to the USB-C hub when I did not have any power supply, no power delivery was attached. It also worked with 48 volts phantom power turned on and I didn't have any issues. However, the Focusrite Vocaster only worked with a dynamic microphone and once I turned on phantom power, it just stopped working. It needed a separate power source to give that phantom power. And then the SSL2 that I'm using right now didn't work at all without an external power source. It just seems to require more power. And of course, I'm also sending an HDMI signal to the external monitor, but the monitor has its own source of power. So keep that in mind. But even with the power delivery, you do have options because you can certainly use a power bank. I do have a, a clamp attached to my rig for a power bank. Now this one is a little bit of an older one. This is an anchor power bank that's 20, 22,000 or 24,000 milliamp hour. It provides up to 20 watts of power delivery from the USB-C port. It is still available on Amazon, but you can see the thickness of it. This fits perfectly in that little extra clamp on the side, and it's been able to provide power for all of these peripherals, no problem and it lasts a good bit of time as well. The one I'm using right now is another Anchor power bank that's a little bit too big to fit into that side clamp that I have. That one's also, I think, 24,000 milliamp hour, but it has a dual USB-C port, one of which will go all the way up to 65 watts of power delivery. The other one is 20 watts. However, you can also just use a wall charger with AC power and connect that to the power delivery port on your hub as well. I've done that too, and that also works just fine. So you do have several options when it comes to power delivery going into your hub that's powering all of these devices. But if you're trying to get by with just the power that the iPhone is providing, your results are gonna vary based on what exactly it is you're trying to connect. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if it was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions about the rig that I set up or any other options that you have. Also share your filming rig down in the comments as well. I'd be curious to see how other people are building this out. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Is this overkill?
Nah. <laughs> <laughs>